has the power. Okay, it's going now. Okay, well, welcome everybody to the uh, Tadwig business meeting. Um, it's kind of hard to roll into a business meeting after such uh, an amazing talk uh, by Kenichi, but I'll do my best to uh, make it entertaining. Um, so I hope you all enjoying the conference so far. We're, we're not quite done, uh, but we're getting there. And uh, I certainly have been very happy uh, with everything I've seen. First of all, our technology has stayed up thanks to uh, a lot of support people, some of which you see here. Um, and uh, our moderators have done a great job keeping us on schedule and making sure that the talks run smoothly. And uh, I have to say, I mean, just looking across both the breadth of what these talks have been about and the quality of these presentations from all kinds of different people, um, I mean, I think it's really impressive. And, and I certainly have learned a lot. I have a lot to go and follow up on too. And I'm glad that we have recorded the videos of these things because some of these talks I need a couple passes at <laughs> just, to, just to make sense of them. Uh, so today for the business meeting, we, um, you know, we have a bit of content to get through and, and to be honest, it's going to take us a little while. Um, so uh, we have several ways we can answer questions. So of course we have the chat uh, and we have most of the executive uh, here. So uh, people can, we can answer things on the fly if you put them into the chat. The same with the Google Doc. Again, we'll monitor that. Uh, the Google Doc can live on beyond this. So if we, uh, if you ask questions, um, what we'll do is we'll answer them there and if you, and we'll give you a way to continually reference that document. So that'll be the living document uh, that has the answers. Uh, I need to move forward here. Okay, so uh, I mean, I can't say enough uh, how important it is to have uh, sort of the financial and in-kind support of, of uh, several of the entities you see up on the screen here, Pensoft Publishing, the Jairos Biodiversity Foundation, Global Biodiversity Information Facility, I think Bio, and the Distributed System of Scientific Collections, DISCO, and the Atlas of Living Australia, or ALA. Uh, and I think we've sort of said over and over that uh, although this event was, uh, we were able to provide you this uh, for a free registration, the event itself behind the scenes is, is of course not free. And uh, if it wasn't for the support of these people and a lot of volunteer action, um, we wouldn't be where we are today, especially given the challenges of, of what we've had to uh, endure to get here. So we made it. I think that's important. And, and I think this map uh, tells a story. So, you know, we didn't understand, we, we didn't know, of course, we didn't plan for a pandemic. We didn't, we didn't even having a pandemic, we didn't really even understand what that, the reality of was that about that for, took us a while. I think we were, well, let's say we were supposed to have a virtual meeting in Washington, DC, just outside of Washington, DC with our friends at IDIG Bio and GBIF and others. Uh, and of course that did not happen. And when the pandemic hit and we talked about how we would coordinate, we decided to pull those pieces apart, of course. Uh, so we're meeting just as Tadwig, because uh, we knew each, each entity knew it would be enough just to pull off their own event uh, in a remote way. Um, and we've all done that. Um, so we're, we're the last of those. Uh, and uh, I think it's been a great success, um, but it's been a lot of hard work along the way, a lot of unknowns becoming more known and some things just left to uncertainty. And well, uh, I, think, I think we've done pretty good. Um, you know, and those numbers there tell a story. So 55 countries, I mean, 55 countries, that's fantastic. And, and that's something that we, at, at our physical meetings, I, I'm not sure we've ever come to 55, my guess is no. Um, so this just shows you that, you know, we're in a new place here. And I hope that this new place really uh, goes on to influence how we think about outreach, how we think about meetings in the future. Um, you know, we, we're not gonna get 700 people in person and maybe we don't want to because thinking about our carbon footprint that makes us uh, lose sleep at night, right? So anyway, I, I think it's fantastic. Uh, and thank you all for coming. So just very quickly, let's talk about a non-standard year in review. Um, I've already talked about the meeting and I've talked a bit about the challenges and, and you know, the pandemic and COVID-19. And you know, the fun part for some of us at least, or, or the interesting part of course, is that this, is, this pandemic's all about science. It's all about uh, biology. And of course that's close to our hearts. And that meant that we actually had a place in this. 
uh, along with other colleagues. So, you know, the, most of you are probably familiar with the CTAF DISCO COVID-19 task force. And, you know, we were able to join that. Um, several of our members uh, contributed to this. And, you know, they're, they're talking about things that we know a lot about. Of course, data standards essential to sharing the data about the viruses, the hosts, um, and data mining and the traits and, you know, even semantic linkages, georeferencing, all of these pieces that we know a lot about touch uh, the ability to deal with this pandemic, to model it and to understand uh, more about it. So I think it's great that we've been able to make these kinds of contributions. And uh, tomorrow, we symposium number five, using collections to mitigate and prevent zoonotic disease, data mobilization and integration, um, that's gonna give us a little window into some of the things that we contributed that our members went out there and did, and also probably a fuel for the future of how can we continue to contribute to uh, events or let, let's say, let's hope we don't have more events, but if we do, we can at least be more prepared for them. Uh, from the biological standpoint and perhaps the interaction standpoint, which is which is interesting. Uh, another piece that uh, some of you will be familiar with is that uh, we now have a, through a stitching, what's called a stitching process, we now have a Tadwig entity in Europe. And that we did that for, on purpose because we saw lots of opportunity, especially with the uh, European Union, but also with countries to help in these big projects. Uh, and the only way we could help really was to have A, the ability to have money associated with us uh, and to contribute uh, you know, through in ways that uh, leverage what Tadwig could bring to the table. Instead of us just being, I guess, instead of us just being invisible, which isn't, it's not invisible, but it's less visible as just members of Tadwig who are contributing to these projects, in having Tadwig actually a member of the project, Tadwig gets more visibility. And I think that's been very positive. And of course, with some of that funding, and, and uh, we've been able to do work on things like the uh, collections descriptions task group. Um, we've contributed to um, MIDS. We've contributed to how did it die, people in biodiversity. So many of the task groups that we have that are as active, we've been actually contributing to because of this new stitching with Europe. So I think that's pretty exciting. We also have the ability uh, to do it, be a little more organized because we have a little bit of Tina Lou's time, which has been very valuable to help keep this process organized and help out along the way. Uh, little things like uh, problems that we have, trying to figure out where to put all the great media that we're, we're creating right now, uh, the videos, things from the past, uh, we're struggling a little bit as to where the best place is for that. So if you have ideas, pay, uh, move that along. Um, and of course, you know, we can't say enough about needing more members, more volunteers. We're, we're, this year has proven very strongly that volunteers are essential to keeping things going. And uh, I, I can't say enough about that, but you'll see a little bit of the financial implications of our members and, and why membership is important and some of the benefits to memberships uh, a little bit later in, in the talk. Uh, forward. So we are a standards organization. And even in a challenging year, I think it's pretty impressive to see some of the work that we've done uh, by looking through uh, just a, a slice of some of the things we've done. So we haven't added any interest groups, but as many, those of you who attended September's working meeting see that a lot of our interest groups are very active, mostly driven by task groups, which is what it's supposed to be. Well, we added a whole bunch of new task groups last year couple in uh, Audubon Core, uh, How Did It Die? I mean, love that. Um, we've heard a lot about MIDS lately and uh, people and attribution, very important. So we also have great things that are in flight and almost ready for us, some of which are already implemented, other of which are coming down the pipe. It's things like GGBN and the uh, chronometric age extension. And I mean, we managed to ratify, oops, okay, I can't click. We managed to ratify a couple of important things. We added some terms to Darwin Core and Audubon Core, and especially we added the extension for geosciences uh, as a ratified addition to ABCD. So lots of great work and thank you to everyone for that. So now I'm gonna pass the floor to Deb to say a little bit, as you know, Deb is the deputy chair and incoming chair uh, in just a few months for a little bit about our vision, Deb. Hi everybody. Um, I'll make this quick, but I'd like to say uh, it's been an exciting two years. I learned uh, the ropes uh, for the executive Tadwick. 
So thank you to everybody who's been uh, walking through that process with me and supporting me as I, I learn uh, how this works. So I look forward to my stint as chair and we're looking of course for a deputy chair that can help advance the vision for the call uh, for the following years. And of course, to all the members, uh, please, I do want to hear from you and about topics that you, you'd like to see put on the list of things to address, of which some have heard I got to hear a very nice summary today at one of the earlier symposia. Um, I am now uh, with the Species File Group at the uh, Illinois Natural History Survey. And in my new role, as some of you've heard, I'm excited to, to tackle some of the issues that are related to uh, what's on this list. It's certainly, um, this is not a comprehensive list. This is just to give you an idea of some of the things I, I hear and different people are pushing that I'd like to see us uh, take on. And one of the things I have added um, to the slide deck that I'm looking at that are not on this one, uh, for example, is the language topic that came up today, which fits in with the spurring on standards implementation and adoption, of course. Um, the strategic plan is something we need to develop and those are some things that uh, need to be included in it. Again, it's not meant to be comprehensive. It's a starting point to uh, big things to think about. Um, some of you heard me earlier today. One of the things I'd like to see is us to make standards visible. Um, it's often where they're used. People have no idea. Uh, and so putting some sort of stamp like a HTML certified sort of thing, a validation stamp and saying, you know, this is Darwin Core. Uh, standard or this is a tablet standard that needs to uh, be visible. And uh, certainly we can learn a lot as um, James just alluded to from what we've recently been through about some things that we need to, to work on so that we can help the world be better prepared for prevention uh, of the kind of things we're going through right now as well as mitigation um, and dealing with it when it, when it happens. So, so I look forward to this and and uh, hearing from all of you and working with you for the next couple of years. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dad. All right, uh, and now I'm uh, gonna talk a little bit about uh, elections and positions, and I'm gonna invite Quinton to walk us through this. Quinton's the secretary. Hi, yes. So every year at this time, uh, we elect half the executive committee. Um, each member of the committee sits for two years except for the uh, chair deputy chair uh, who sits for four years one two years as deputy chair two years as the chair so this year we're electing a new deputy chair a new secretary um, someone to lead the fundraising fundraising and partnership uh, subcommittee the outreach and communication subcommittee and uh, continental representatives for Africa, Asia, Europe, and North America. I hope you've seen over the last few days the broad range of skills people need to have to understand the things we do in Tadwig. We're not all a technical group. You don't need to be technical to be on the, the executive committee. And, and actual fact, if, if, if you want more interested in organizing virtual meetings, then this is the perfect place to be. Um, Normally, we would have the chance at a face-to-face -face meeting to come and strong arm some people at coffee time. Um, we do ask that you try and find us somewhere in a, in a virtual meeting sometime uh, to talk to us about uh, what position you might like to take in the uh, organization. Um, there are lots of opportunities. Uh, certainly, in my experience has been very positive. You learn an awful lot about biodiversity informatics. Uh, and it's enjoyable, uh, challenging, sure, uh, but you won't learn any, any quicker than doing it. So please, uh, I'll be reminding you tomorrow as well. Um, and the deadline for nominations is the 16th of November. Um, you can nominate yourself. In actual fact, most people nominate themselves. Thank you, Quentin. And so now we move on to uh, the financial report. Uh, our treasurer is William Ulate, and he will take us through this component. William, are you there? He's muted. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Um, there he is. Thank you. First of all, um, a summary we are in black numbers. That's very good. Um, um, still, we are 
need to make some expenses from now until December for this year. Uh, the spending has been reduced, in particular because of, of different things, but no traveling, for example, has had an impact in some of the, of the expenses that we were planning to do on the budget. Um, membership has, has uh, keep growing. Um, maybe it's not one of the highest that we had in, in, in some years, but it's, it's, it's good. Um, volunteers and in-kind contributions also um, have uh, have been uh, a, a factor that reduce spending because we don't we don't have to, as uh, James mentioned, spend in many of the things that volunteers are really covering and some of the things that our donors are actually um, our, support, our supporters are actually uh, helping us with. Um, well, so some of the things that we were developing, like the Chadwick side and other things that we were developing in previous years came to an end, which means that now we're not um, um, paying for those things. Um, and one thing, important thing is the non-for-profit status also has started to have an impact. Uh, many uh, or several of the licenses that we get right now are um, very low or free for not-for-profit uh, organizations, and we take advantage of that. Can I see the next one, please? So in, um, in a quick overview, this is the budget that we were planned uh, last year. Um, it's uh, the idea, the whole idea is that it ends up in zero. Um, there are seven lines there. Uh, the expenses on the top, the main two are uh, the, what we call the executive expenses. That includes uh, the staff, uh, the executive travel, not-for-profit uh, um, status filing, uh, subscriptions, and so on. Um, the program is uh, the funds that we have for uh, what we call the CSF. It's a fund that we uh, promote traveling for uh, interest group or task groups to do uh, a particular product. Um, that's something that we also had uh, budgeted and having, having uh, put, uh, made a call to spend that. And um, the other two, the annual meeting and the reserve were uh, budgeted at zero. So we were hoping to have a meeting that wouldn't um, imply that we invest on it. Um, that's why those two are in zero. And the reserve is usually whatever we have left, we put it in the reserve for uh, uh, not a very good year. Um, in terms of income, uh, of course, the membership is our greatest uh, asset. Um, we had, uh, last year, we had assumed that we would ha have 50 individual members and 35 institutional members. Um, as you may recall, um, individual and institutional members have a different uh, uh, payment and different attributions when, uh, when voting. So we had our math according to previous years and we're expecting to have those numbers. Um, as I said, the conference is a uh, registration. We were expecting to break even there. And the, uh, in order to get a zero budget, um, that zero budget, we were hoping that to get uh, sponsors and grants for uh, $30,000. Uh, Next one, please. So, um, as I said, we haven't spent much of it. Uh, we still have to register some of the expenses from now until next year. Um, so you'll see that really the, the spending, the part of the spending is, is very, very low. We haven't uh, uh, registered uh, uh, many of the things that we were expecting to register. Uh, we do have to make some payments uh, for um, hopefully, uh, uh, or we have to make some payments in the next, in the, um, from last month of the year for coordination and um, editor and other things that we were uh, including in the executive. Um, things like licenses and things like that are really, really low. For example, we were, uh, we were getting software that it's only, uh, we only pay by month, which means that the expenses are, are particularly low. We don't, um, even if we have, uh, now that we have a uh, accounting system, which helps us generate the invoices, it's uh, just about $190. That's, that's the expense that we got. So uh, in that sense, we have kept uh, spending very low. I don't expect that to go very far. Probably we're not gonna spend everything that we had uh, budgeted or thought that we were spending. 
In terms of membership, um, we had uh, we thought that we would get the amount of seventeen thousand seven hundred and fifty. Um, and we already have 16,159. Um, we still have some few people who register lately. Um, and that, this is last month or two. Um, so we're probably gonna hit that mark uh, very well. Um, and in terms of the sponsoring and grants, um, what you see there as a choir is what we already have in our bank's accounts. But we have um, a total of uh, more than $60,000 already committed by our sponsors to uh, support this, uh, um, to put our activities. So in that sense, that deficit uh, that you see down there, or don't see it down there, it's, uh, it's gonna come up uh, really low, if not uh, zero, hopefully. Next, please. So as uh, James said, uh, there we have a tile big Europe now and that, uh, um, Budget is handled differently. Um, again, we had uh, we had had it already for uh, two years. The first year goes from um, uh, May May 2018 till December 2019, and the second year starts in in January of 2020. Um, also, we haven't had much of the uh, there of the spending there because the synthesis project that we were going to uh, have, for example, is. Uh, is not traveling right now. We probably are gonna support some people going to um, some of the meetings with RDA and so on, uh, because we we have to, to spend those uh, those funds in, in the activities that the project expects. And uh, also um, one change that was done with the project was that um, Naturalis helped us uh, manage uh, uh, part of the uh, um, coordinator uh, and the payment. So. Uh, we redirected some of the funds there, and and that's uh, that's meant that of course we have the, the support of Tina Lu as uh, Jim uh, James mentioned, but also um, I gotta I gotta say the the involvement of our uh, regional director of Walter Adding and uh, before that uh, of Dimitris has helped us actually move this forward. Uh, we had a, a little uh, shenanigans to do with uh, uh, accounts and and and. Uh, uh, attributions and so on, uh, legal things that we had to do. So what we have is a postal address at, at, uh, to, in order to, to be able to be an entity there and a, a register in Europe. And um, the rest is the projects that we can now uh, be part of. Um, and uh, so, so far, Tadwick Global has only had to support very little for uh, for the expenses there, and we actually, uh, it's, it's uh, as soon as the payments came in, we were able to solve that. So the good thing here is that for 2020, we're actually uh, very well. Um, in here, we don't have yet a zero budget, which we have to try to improve later, um, try to go into uh, the same that we had as income, as expensive as you've had, you have as income. But uh, that it's, it's good. Again, thank you very much to our colleagues in Europe who are really, really helping uh, make that through. This is some uh, figures, bank accounts, um, the uh, amount accumulated uh, per bank account. Uh, we now have two bank accounts, uh, as usual, the Bank of American and PayPal, which is how some of you pay us. But also now we have a, a bank queue, which is the, the account in Europe. Um, that's, that's good. And as usual, we keep it in, in a certain uh, neighbor um, hopefully that if a uh, year comes where we have to spend, we have a way to to um, sustain it. Um, so that, that part is, is fine. Uh, can we see the next one? Uh, membership, membership, as I said, it's uh, starting to go up again. It had come down, um, it, it turned around actually. Now we have, as you see, more um, institutional members than ever uh, in, um, we want to uh, get more people, of course, involved all the time. That's that's better, um, not only for the membership, but also for helping us in all the activities that James mentioned. Go ahead. And this is the accumulated uh, income um, from membership by year for each one of the types of membership uh, in a way to, to show that it's not only the number of people, but the amounts um, 
and in reality we are uh, getting a, a good income from from your contributions and that's what keeps us going thanks william okay so uh i'd like to move on to uh talk about uh, our journal and and our publishing and i'm going to let uh, our editor-in-chief gail kempmeyer say a few words about that hi um Tadwick Proceedings uh, published 80 abstracts, as you can, as you've probably all seen. I hope you've uh, been reading some of these, and we'll look for the um, posters and talks and other kinds of links under media um, that uh, will increase the discovery of all of this work. Um, there was a landmark standards paper published this year uh, by Chapman et al on developing standards for improved data quality and selecting fit for use of biodiversity data. And uh, you can go find that as well. And I would like to encourage everyone to publish articles in BIS outside of the conference proceedings. It's, this is a, an open access um, publication and it tracks a variety of impact uh, metrics um, and as a benefit of our membership you get a discount on publishing so if you're a member um, the page charges are reduced for uh, publishing in BIS so please take a look uh, not only are the uh, pro proceedings from 2020 here but also from biodiversity next uh, from last year and from uh, 2017 on. I think that's, I'm done. Okay, Th thank you very much, Gail. And I, I think Gail would also like to say that uh, if you're interested in helping out with the journal, uh, either, whether to be a, um, a uh, member of the editorial team or uh, in review. Uh, we're always looking for good people to help out. So uh, I think we can say that too. And I'd like to just quickly add it, Gail, you said it, but I wanted to put a stamp on it. For all of you who are not aware or maybe didn't catch on before, but you can have your slides as a PDF added to your abstract after the meeting. And a lot of people opt to do that, it's optional. Uh, but we also will do that for the posters. So all the posters this year, they have poster abstracts. They get that way going back over time, of course, we can see the poster that goes with the abstract, right? So we're adding uh, added value and we'll also be able to add other related documents, Gail. Uh, that was some conversation that went on we about can, that. We can add some kinds of things. It depends on the size, but okay. we can also add links to uh, the YouTube presentations, for example. So yep. thinking about extending reach and extending language availability, those kinds of things, ideas for how to do that, they're maybe wrapped up in, in some of those, the potential there. Mm -hmm. I like the concept of discovery. I mean, all those things are right in one place. You know, you really can go, you have your abstract, you have the video of the talk if you want it, you have the talk itself, possibly translations. I mean, this is power. This, this, I, really, I really think yep. this is a great platform. Yep. And, and each abstract can... has its own DOI or digital yep. object identifier and each um, part of the um, of this meeting also each symposium, for example, has its own um, URL to all the papers there. Yeah, so each collection for each symposium. Collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we did get some questions about that in various of the, the sessions. So. Yeah, great. Okay. Moving on, um, in, uh, in our organization, as part of the executive, we have uh, a few positions that we call functional subcommittees. And uh, those are meant to sort of be permanent, um, permanent focus on some general topics that are important to an organization. So I'll just quickly give you an overview of those um, because it's important uh, to see a little bit of what their activities are uh, that you need to know about. So the first one of those is Time and Place, chaired by uh, Patricia Merrigan. And uh, the important part here is a little bit of a vision out to where we think Tadwig is going to be over the next few years, physically and, and perhaps virtually. Um, so you'll hear more about 2021, so I'm not gonna say anything more about that. Uh, 2022, our hypothesis is Australia with GBIF, um, and that would be with GBIF nodes as well. Um, in 23, our hypothesis is the EU somewhere, possibly with our friends at DISCO and CTAF. 
And in 2024, uh, we're pretty committed to Japan, which I think is pretty exciting. For fundraising and partnership, uh, which is chaired by Connie Ronaldo, um, we managed to secure some support for the meeting. So that was good in one way or another, both uh, through fundraising, through commitments of in-kind, uh, and we work pretty hard to, to make that happen. And uh, the strategic plan, which is, uh, we're, we're not trying to put this on the back bench, that's for sure, it's very important to us, but this was not an easy year to pull that off. Uh, and so uh, we really are committed to this. I know Connie's looking forward to this, uh, so you'll hear more soon. Uh, the next one is really important. Um, so we're missing a chair a convener of the TAG, the Technical Architecture Group. Uh, you know, this is a very important resource to, to Tadwig because it is the cross-reference and it is the outreach to make sure that our standards internally are consistent, non-overlapping, non-duplicative, but also externally consistent and non-overlapping and non-duplicative. So we really need uh, someone to lead this. We have some strong members who will fall underneath, I'm sure, uh, but this is a real call out to people interested and who think they can commit to that. Uh, so please let us know if you're interested. Uh, we have an outreach and communications uh, group led by Prabhakar, and uh, they had a really successful um, uh, workshop at, at uh, Biodiversity Next last year, which has led to some outreach um, that was focused on the Global South, uh, but they really want to ramp it up. And I think, you know, today's talking about uh, language and diversity, I think we really need some focus there, and I'm sure Deb is going to uh, push that agenda forward with that outreach and communications uh, group. And lastly, Tim, I mean, I think Tim said himself, he had a, a pretty boring year, which in the sense of infrastructure is good. Uh, nothing fell down, uh, our stuff still works, uh, that's great. Uh, and a little shout out to, to uh, Steve for uh, making us able to uh, better access our materials uh, through URLs. Now, the next thing on the agenda is uh, all of the task groups and interest groups, reports and bullets and things. And as you see, we have quite a few of those and uh, many of them have uh, quite a few things to say. Uh, and so I think today, given the time, we're not going to try to go through those, uh, but we'll make this uh, presentation available to you. So you'll get the short version of what each of them wanted to say. And then uh, you'll also have access to their reports. So every year, the interest groups and task groups need to produce a report for, for the executive, and we'll post those on the website. So for any of those groups, you wanna see what they're up to, in the next little while, you'll have access to that material. So excuse me as I sort of skip through those quickly to the next one, next topic. And you'll see that I have to skip through a lot because there's a lot of them, which is exciting. All right, so we come down to giving thanks. And uh, this year is kind of a special year uh, with some hurdles. So this year came at, at a cost in some ways, uh, at, at a, you know, I don't know what the right word for this is, but at, at a railroading in some ways of, of the executive. So we had uh, the issue that I explained earlier with the pandemic and having to go virtual. And because of that, we lost the host. So usually our meetings are run. We, some group, some museum, some, somebody wants to host our meeting. They take care of all the logistics. And we sort of help in the process. We usually help with abstract review. We give guidance, but the money and, and the registration, all of those things are handled by the host. Well, this year we lost the host. And that meant that essentially the program committee had to fall backwards onto the executive. And uh, we took that on. Uh, and as a strong team, we, uh, we spent a lot of time Zooming uh, and we, I, I mean, I think you see from the meeting so far, uh, we, were, we were very successful and, and that comes, you know, it takes a village to do this and uh, people put in extraordinary amounts of time. And uh, I have to say our fearless leader, Gail, um, certainly kept us in line, kept us motivated. Uh, you see uh, the fruits of her efforts in leading this charge. And, and I, am, I am super thankful um, under the circumstances, I can't say enough. Uh, the, the scheduling masters over a 24 hour period, trying to fit things into time zones, trying to fit things into time zones when GBIF uh, governing board took away half of the good slots that we needed. <laughs> um, you know, sense of humor aside, man, 
uh, what a fantastic job uh, and, and the balance here and the patience of, of people you see, we're getting hundreds of people attending each session. I mean, that, that's fantastic and, and thank you so much. On the technical side, William, William had to do a bunch of research to try and figure out what the best technologies were. He had a bunch of friends to ping off of and to, try to test things out. And Stan helped us with the website as always. Uh, and that piece was essential. I mean, I, we, we were Zooming uh, and we've, we've had no problems. Uh, and Eventbrite kept us uh, registration going. So again, many thanks. I have to shout out to Paula for the amazing logo that she built for this conference. We didn't get to make the t-shirts or uh, other swag that we could have. Maybe we'll do that in future anyway. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, Paula, for that. Uh, and then uh, on Gail's side, uh, with the abstract reviewers, we had a number of us committed to looking at those abstracts. Uh, it takes time to edit those. Those are published entities. So you can't just say, looks good, thumbs up. Um, you have to put the time in and, and people did. And I have to say thank you to all of the people who submitted presentations in meeting our challenge when we, when we pushed edits to you or suggestions, many of you uh, very quickly turned that around and that was important to us. So, so thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I, well, does anybody else on the uh, executive want to say a word that I, any words that I've missed? quite quiet. We oh, had, okay. well, we have to thank you also. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Thanks to you too, James. <laughs> well, I You're appreciate that. It, right? <laughs> I did a little bit of a, of, of a lot of little things, uh, just, just trying to keep the ball moving too, but uh, it really was a village effort and, and thank you, all of you. And I would like to say thank you for embracing the use of Slack. That's what I would like to say. Mm. Seriously, I'm so glad we did not have to do all that we did in a pile of emails. I really appreciate it. Yes, 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was a Slack lover from the from before this, but uh, this really was another proof positive of just the power of, of tools like that to keep us uh, organized and communicating. And uh, communication is so important in something like this. Uh, the other thing you have to appreciate uh, for those of you out there is that we met every week uh, for at least an hour, almost always ran over to an hour and a half every week for months and months, probably five months. Uh, and that, that's a significant time commitment to these people. Uh, and, and I think that we really have to appreciate that. Now, there are others who participated, of course. There's all of you who had the um, great ideas for symposia, for workshops, those working meetings, all of the components that we do. Oh, I'm on the wrong slide. Hold on a second. Go there first. Um, and uh, thank you very much. I mean, without the content, we, without the people who are willing to put those ideas forward, gather people who are interested to present, uh, we, you know, we wouldn't be successful. So uh, I think we really have to celebrate the diversity of different symposia of topics uh, this year uh, and the contributions of, of all of these people. And we know there's all kinds of backbenchers behind these people. Um, uh, so we have to say thank you very much. And to those uh, symposia people who in the beginning probably didn't realize that they'd have to be moderators and they'd have to be uh, Zoom gurus themselves. So they also had to have the sense of humor of coming in and helping out. And I, and I think we've seen that they've done a great job and, and had that sense of humor. So fantastic. Going back for a second, since I skipped the techies, uh, the techies were important. We made this, uh, this is another one of our Slack groups. And this group here uh, really were the, uh, the experimenters. So as especially William kept throwing ideas out at us and trying to experiment, he needed people to help. And so a bunch of these people all said, well, I'll try. And uh, we had a lot of fun. And I think if you had have seen from the beginning all the different technologies we thought might be useful and trying to figure out how they all might work together, I think you'll see that in the end, simple is good. We kept it simple. And I think that worked. Uh, and, and again, thank you to those technical people who put in that time. Now, I can't, uh, you know, one of the things we would do, of course, is uh, we would uh, give out certificates, uh, gifts, presentation, you know, and, and we can't do that. And, and I feel a little bit uh, sad about that. Um, and I can say that we have, we're scheming some ideas still uh, of how to recognize the efforts of people or just, at least a memorial to the efforts of people. We'll get back to you on that. 
Um, but uh, well, virtual handshake, virtual hug. Thank you so much. Uh, that, that's that's all. That's all I can say. This is the end of my term, and uh, it's been it's been fantastic. Thank you so much. Now, let's get on to the next exciting thing. Let's talk about what we hope to do next year. And uh, I need to see if Pam, are you with us? Yes, I am. Excellent. Tell us what we're going to do, Pam. Well, great. Well, thanks, James. And first of all, I'd just like to congratulate this year's conference organizers on really an awesome virtual conference. Um, it's been stimulating. It's been exciting. It's been perfectly well run. And I really appreciate everything that you've all done. So um, with that in mind, um, I'm a little bit nervous um, to make this next announcement, but um, I'm happy to announce that TADWIG 2021 will be hosted by the University of Florida Biodiversity Institute and IDIG Bio. And with any luck, we will be meeting in Florida next fall. Um, but there, of course, are big question marks around that. And so uh, we're planning for multiple um, eventualities. So uh, we're working with a conference organizer from the university to explore in-person, um, an in-person conference, a completely virtual conference, and some sort of hybrid conference. And after seeing those statistics on the um, participation this year and what I've seen over some other conferences over the last few months, I think it would really be a shame not to um, try to uh, provide those sorts of inputs and opportunities for people around the world. Um, so that even if we do meet in person, we would like there to be some um, remote opportunities uh, for people to uh, check in, present talks, participate in sessions, discussions, and so on. But we'll have to see how all of that uh, works out. Uh, we're not sure exactly about a lot of things, not only the format, but um, also not the duration. Um, part of that will depend on the mode that we select. Um, we're also still working on the dates. So we expect this to be sometime in probably late September to mid-October. We are trying to coordinate the, um, the uh, conference with the uh, GBIF and IDIG Bio um, conference that is currently being scheduled to take place potentially in Washington, DC um, in early October, so October 4th to 8th. And so we would think that perhaps we would meet either before or after that so that those people who are traveling to the US for the um, GBIF conference in particular would um, only need to make one trip to the US. They could just have a little trip down to Florida either before or after that GBIF conference. But uh, we're, we're still working on that and uh, we'll have to see what happens there. So um, I'll just ask for your patience as we try to sort out all of these um, various um, you know, uncertainties. Now, we are hoping, though, to engage the community in another exciting conference next year, but we also want to engage members of the community um, in um, contributing to the program. And so there will be a request for participation from the community that will be going out in December. And again, I just like to invite um, many of you to uh, think about joining the program committee and helping to develop uh, a really exciting program, no matter what our mode of delivery happens to be. Um, and so as you can see on the slide, there's um, an email address there for um, questions. So conference organizers at tadwig.org and with a uh, subject of tadwig2021. And maybe that can go into the Google doc as well. It probably already is there, but I just didn't look for it. So um, that's all I have to say. Just thanks again to everyone for a great conference this year. And we're really excited to uh, follow things up and try to make a really good one for next year as well. Thanks. Thank you very much, Pam. I'm sure that no matter what, uh, what happens, it, it, will be, uh, it will be exciting. Thank you so much for your offer uh, of, to host. My okay. Pleasure. So, we don't have too much time left for questions. Uh, I think at least I would have the sense of humor to stay a little bit after if people uh, need and want to ask important questions. It's, it's important that we communicate well 
Um, but I, my last thing to say is uh, I would not uh, forget about the final social tomorrow uh, at uh, 2030 UTC. If you're not there, you're going to miss something special. So I, um, I don't know. I haven't been able to see the uh, chat or the Google document, so I have no idea what the uh, questions and enthusiasm is like out there. Um, can do one of my colleagues want to tell me uh, what best we do? Open the floor. Sure, why not? We have what, five minutes? Yeah, we got five minutes. And if we take 10, if, if people have, so it's late yeah, for yeah. some people yeah, I know. Exactly, exactly. In Europe. <laughs> so uh, please. Uh, I think you guys have to be patient if we get it wrong. I'm still looking too, and the chat is moving. I see the first question I see is from David Shorthouse. Any thoughts yet about registration fees for remote versus in-person attendance in 2021? That is a fantastic question. Pam, do you want to say what we've gone around on a little bit about, we just talked about it. Right, yeah, so um, of course the, the hybrid conference might be ideal from a lot of perspectives, but um, what we've learned is that the hybrid conferences are the most expensive options. And so um, we're working with the conference um, organizing team from campus to um, just explore what those different options might be. And um, we would want to set um, registration rates that are um, appropriate to the participation level. So, you know, we may think that remote um, participation should be cheap and free or almost, but in fact, that could be just as expensive in terms of um, actually putting it on as um, an in-person. So we, uh, we will definitely try to keep all of the costs um, as low as possible, but um, at this point, it's all really up in the air. Um, I think, David, we are sensitive and several people have brought it up to you know, what people can or can't afford. So I would also suggest subsequently, we would also try to find funding to help buffer those who couldn't come otherwise and find, find funds for that, um, if that helps with where you're thinking with that question. Yeah, yeah, and I will just echo that as well. I think hopefully through either funding that we could uh, raise here at UF, um, maybe coupled with uh, what the fundraising and partnerships um, committee could come up with, um, hopefully we would be able to um, reduce the registration costs all around so that um, we can make it as easy for people to participate as possible. Um, the free option, the so-called free option, this, this year was really amazing and a few other conferences that I've attended have been the same way, but, um, but they're not really free um, because as the people who, all of you organizers who put this on, you've been working hours and hours and hours um, to do this. So um, if we need to uh, have some um, paid help, then you know, we'll have to pass that on to the, um, through the registration fees. Oh. I would like to, us to all promote David Fichtmuller's idea, Pam. Did you see in the chat? Um, <laughs> yes. He, he has requested that we make sure that the Kennedy Space Center knows when our conference is and they should schedule a launch thusly. I'll, yes. I'll give him a call tomorrow. <laughs> yes, please do. So um, that is another reason why it would be great to be in person. So I have to tell you a trip over to that coast to see that is it's, it's quite phenomenal. Um, well, there's lots of other phenomenal things about the local area there. Um, there are more questions in here, down here, I think. Uh, da, 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 da. Rich Pyle observes he'd be willing to pay to attend virtually given how much he would save on airfare and lodging. So again, it might be that there are tiers and people that can pay, pay, and that, that helps us cover the cost of getting this done when we get a conference organizing group like at a university to organize the meeting. Um, yes, Pat, we found yeah, the thanks. same. Um, yeah. Yes, there is a terrible, ex people have been saying this over and over again, that they think remote is cheap. I have to say, no, especially if you're going to do it well. Mm -hmm. So for example, I think we did it well here and we did it fairly cheaply if you take the cost of technology that we purchased to do it. But the human cost, the hours we've spent, if, if we were going to do this again, and we have to start planning right now, we, we don't, it's like we don't have time to do our jobs. It's not we cannot not do it. Again. It's not sustainable. We not we, at all. We must, we must have help. real paid help. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. This was um, special. Yes, it was. Yes, we all know travel is going to be for all of us. I think we have no idea. Oh, logos. Cool. Yeah. 
That'd be great. Um, oh, <laughs> the Darwin Core logo. What's that about? Speak. Somebody speak. It's in existence. That's what it is. There is no Darwin Core logo. So, That's the problem. Well, <laughs> we're asking for one. All right. Well, so here there, there are several people of the maintenance group. Maintenance group, if you're bored at some point, there you have it. We want so we, a logo for Darwin Core. You have to do so, it. <laughs> so we have a biodiversity information standards tab where it sort of says the words, but couldn't we also have a sort of logo for the, the and then a it would be great. I would love the, a Darwin Core logo too. I'm just, I, aren't we thinking of the logo as uh, using it as a seal of approval? So it's a more important than a logo. Well, this that's is another, Darwin Core that, blessed. Stamp. That kind of thing that I was saying, yeah, but that could be Darwin Core. It could be Audubon Core. It could be. I'm just saying uh, that my idea earlier in its well, my initial idea was powered by Biodiversity Information Standards Tadwick, pa powered by our data standards. If you want to powered by a specific standard, by all means, yes, I love that idea. Yes, um, and, and have, have a common design for all of the different standards, yeah, just yeah. like Wikimedia uses right. all of the different yes. sites, have yes, common yes, elements, yes. common colors. Exactly, exactly. Wunderbar, ausgezeichnet, yes. <laughs> um, yes, the Tadwig lonely logo text only, that, yes, yes, Steve, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Um, Part of that colors? is coming Part of that's coming from there was a question in the Google Doc from uh, on standards branding and hex logos, as used by the open somebody. Software they world. got space on their computer. They want the little hex logo to stick on their yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions, issues, topics that people want to? There, there are some other comments about um, transparency of costs and things. And I think we would um, definitely want to share that with everyone. I had experience with the Botany Conference earlier this summer where the registration fees that were first being suggested seemed extremely high for especially to people who hadn't attended um, or participated in putting on a virtual conference. And people were like, why? What are we paying $250 for? Um, but it turned out that in fact, once the um, management um, uh, committee laid everything out about what all of the, the costs were associated with the conference, um, everybody was like, okay, sure. We just didn't understand. So I think we would uh, wanna do the same thing so that, um, so that it's definitely clear where any registration fees were, were heading. And um, let's see. Yeah, what else? And oh, Lauren um, had the suggestion of not buying an expensive, um, fancy platform. Yeah, we would uh, most likely do um, some form of Zoom. Uh, we already have the uh, webinar package um, accessible to us. So if we wanted to go that way, we could for some of the larger um, events. And um, otherwise, we could, um, we have a, um, we have the uh, contract for um, expanded meeting capacity as well. So just quickly, because you all are here, may I take the liberty of asking, you might have noticed, some of you will know this and some of you will not, but originally we, of course we used Zoom meeting, the same thing we're using now for the working sessions last month. But this month we planned originally to use the webinar and to limit it so Q&A would be the only way you'd be able to ask the presenters questions, but you wouldn't be able to do what you've been doing in the chat for the whole meeting. How many of you uh, wished we would have used webinar? Anyone? Is there anyone that missed and thinks that the Q&A situation's better and likes that so much that they would give up the interaction in the chat? I was on one on Monday, it was terrible. Mm. You couldn't see anybody except the person Doc? talking. Yeah. No. Yep. Didn't want to be there. <laughs> That's my feeling. David, mm -hmm. please speak. I guess it's it's not so much that the webinar option is better. It's just more secure. So there's just a lot less risk of being Zoom bombed, uh, which is why people tend to use it. Uh, not necessary because the experience of having one that is uh, issue free is, is necessarily better. And considering that we were really yeah, I don't know, lucky so far, or I have good, took good precautions. Um, of course, the conference style is, is, is much easier and much better for the interaction. Uh, um, 
Yeah, so the Zoom bombing thing, just to, um, Connie, we, we have not had any knock on wood so far. Um, so, so mainly from my understanding, and, and Steve, you put that in there too, yeah. The main Zoom bombing problems are people that put their links, open links on things like Twitter and Facebook, where bots can crawl and grab it. Um, there are people who allow the annotation, the annotate feature, the whiteboard to be open to all. People can just start drawing on the screen anytime. Uh, that's turned off here. Um, video backgrounds, that's turned off. So you cannot run roller coasters or other pictures in your background. Um, we also have the registration in Eventbrite means that Eventbrite does the authentication and William and I went around and around trying to wrap our brains around how that works. And um, so, so you, you have to go through that sort of Eventbrite process to validate who you are to get in. So the chances are that anybody's going to do that would have to be very purposeful, whereas the other ones are more opportunistic because they grab it and can get into a public room, if that helps. Hey, I like, uh, I like David's idea here. Yeah. You want to, uh, we'll all mute and we'll, we'll do a silent clap for everybody. Oh. I think our picture idea silent. is probably, yeah. well, we could do it loud too. No, I mean, unmute. The whole point was to clap. Unmute. That's what uh, they would unmute. Say. Sorry. Okay. Yes. We unmute. Everybody, yes. unmute. Excellent. Okay. Here we go. Yes, please. Unmute. We can do it. Round of applause for everybody. Yay! Please. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. It's been amazing. Oh, Nikki. <laughs> hey, Chuck. I can't do that. I can't figure out how you did that. Chuck, yeah, I never understand how you get what the codes are to get. I don't either. Anyway, I have to learn that. Another, another problem. Anyway, I'm, I'm conscious of time, especially for some of our European colleagues, et cetera. Yes, indeed. It's, yes, uh, indeed. it's after midnight to them. Ellie knows all about that. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so I just want to say a final thank you so much uh, on, on behalf of the executive for, uh, for all everybody's help, uh, everybody's understanding. Uh, you know, we, we all, it, it's a family, it's a village. We, we know what that type of community is like and, and we're strong and we're going to move forward no matter what. So thank you all. And one more day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You say nobody wants to go. This happens at every single one we've done. <laughs> we almost need an after party for every session for all the hangers on. So, I just a quick question for tomorrow. Um, was there a template for the moderate the collaborative notes, or is it everybody's making their own? There, well, there is one we've kind of been using, yeah. Yeah, I tried to find it, but I couldn't find it. So, just so Quentin, the one that we've been using is. Uh, basically, the one that is for CO1, CO2, CO3, you can take any of those, make a copy, and just. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. When I'm I know CO, CO3 is in the CO3 presentations folder. I think it was because yeah. they're yeah. Word can, documents and not Google Docs. You can, you can also look in the schedule and logistics form in column, I don't know what it is, L or something over there. There are links to all of them are there. Who's uh, Zoom, Zoom admin of CO5? Schedule, yeah. Co oh my God, I even got the column right without looking. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, uh, so I noticed Steve made a comment. Uh, I don't know how many of you have a chance to uh, read the blog post by uh, Sharif Islam. Um, and Nikki Nicholson, are you still here, Nikki? Um, but basically, people's reactions to not having parallel sessions has been interestingly insightful and very positive. So this sense that you feel that we may not have noticed as much before, or we just took it for granted, the tension that you feel when you go to a meeting and you're having to choose all the time and you feel that pain of, well, I want to go to both, but and then you feel like you missed out. And then you lose the ability to make connections because you've lost the perspective. And people have been Sharif commenting and, and Nikki had written a blog, a tweet, I think, um, about this and how they're feeling. And Steve is echoing that, that sentiment here. So I think that's something, another reason why virtual is nice because you can, I think we have the opportunity to avoid it more easily <laughs> in a way. 
So one thing, Paula, for, for CO5, um, Peter Hubrecht is down to help us, but he's been called away, so it'll just be you and me, I think. But I don't think that's a big problem. I missed that. I'm sorry. I was distracted by the emoji generator. You're saying at the next session you need help? It wouldn't hurt to have one extra person, but basically All Peter right. can't, can't be the uh, can't be the tech. Okay. It's for CO5. Yep. Um, Paula's down as the second tech, um, and I'm the you moderator. Need, but you need a Zoom admin, is what you're saying? Uh, if is anyone available, yeah. Is that the early one? It's mm. CO5. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... For you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the one at eleven thirty UTC. Not so bad. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, that's that's a little late for me. What time is that? It's at like seven thirty Eastern time. Quentin, I'm not volunteering for that. I'm sorry. Yeah, like I, I, I want to attend, but I could get up, but I'd be so stupid. You would. <laughs> yeah, I could probably ask Matthias to do it. Actually, he's oh. also doing the next one. Oh. What, what What do you need, Quentin? Do you need somebody with a with an executive account or just an additional no, person letting people in? It's just it's another person letting people in, right? Basically. Well, I, guess I, I, I I can do that. I'm planning on taking part in the session anyway. Okay. So Quentin, so who will open the room as admin? Will I do that? Or who will do that? But either me or you, whoever gets there first, I think. <laughs> okay, I, because we Oh, there, there is the meeting will might be running from before, or is there an hour? Yeah, I'm in the one before too, so um, yeah. I'm actually the tech admin in the one before. So, so I, can you just, can, I can just keep that open. Yeah, you can just put everybody in the waiting yeah. room that hangs on. But then you're going to be the admin when you come back, I think, if I'm understanding that right. And then you can always make somebody else host. Yes. Zoom admin. When, when they get there, you can make David host or Paula. Just because I'm moderating the next one, obviously yeah. I can't right. do both things at the same time. So. Right, right. But you can always change the host then once. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, I guess you remember, they, we're, we're stopping the recording for the talks, right? Yeah, probably should. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do we want to stop the recording right now? We're just kind of. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, we should.